Meanwhile, in the AL East, for the Red Sox and their injured ace, Chris Sale, he's not going to require... Oh, how lucky was that? ...Tommy John surgery, but the, the initial diagnos uh, diagnosis of the elbow was uh, the inflammation confirmed earlier when he met with Dr. James Andrews in Florida, so he's on the injured list, and Saturday expected to miss the rest of the season. So let's welcome in our FS1 MLB insider, John Paul Morosi, and it's always good to see you. What impact, J.P., does this news have on Chris Sale's future with the defending World Series champion Red Sox? Well, Chris, good evening, and this is certainly a big story for the Red Sox, and I'm not totally convinced that all the news is good here because this is not the way the Red Sox envisioned sales season going in general. And, of course, next year he begins year one of that five-year $145 billion contract extension. So while the news for now is good, there is still some concern about what this could bring in the future, especially considering, of course, he missed some time down the stretch last season with other signs of arm fatigue as well. So this, Chris, is where I look at the offseason and say the Red Sox have to build themselves in some lower-cost pitching as insurance in case sales injury recurs itself in the springtime. I know we talked before about the possibility of moving Mookie Betts. While drastic, that has to be one of the menu options out there for the Red Sox because they need some controllable young pitching as an insurance policy. And frankly, right now, their farm system does not have that at the upper, at the upper levels. All right, meanwhile, Red Sox hoping for a wild card run late into the season. Yeah. Max Scherzer, who is expected to return for the Nats Thursday, how will they handle his workload right away? Chris, for now, it looks like his pitch count will be around 75 or 80 pitches there in Thursday's start. But even that's going to be a huge lift for the Washington Nationals, who have not had him basically for the last six weeks. He's made just one start in those last six weeks, as Jamal Collier has pointed out, pointed out at MLB.com. And so in those last six weeks still, the Nationals have managed a 21-14 and 14 record, as Frank just pointed out. So the, the sim game you saw over the weekend went very well. Max has pronounced himself to be healthy and ready to go. And again, he now adds to a team that already right now is holding the top wild card spot in the National League. So Joe Ross, who we just saw a moment ago, he's been so solid for them, as has Eric Fetty. So Scherzer now, you think about the Nationals being in the top wild card team, you wonder, could that be a team that frightens the Dodgers should they prevail in that wild card game? Yeah, and the Nationals with this win on the Idol Braves, they're only five games back of the division lead in the National League East. Uh, National League East excuse me. And so the Rays, uh, let's talk more about their issues. Plenty of injuries to deal with all season long. Update the Tyler Glasnow possibly returning this season. Are they counting on that? Is that a real chance? There is a real chance, Chris, and it's actually pretty exciting for the Rays because we saw him in the early part of May. He was an all-star candidate back at that point in time, but he has not pitched in the major league since May the 10th because of a forearm strain. But now the Rays, according to the Tampa Bay Times, are, are planning on having him come back as a reliever. So it's likely going to be in, in shorter stints, one or two innings. He is due to begin a rehab assignment, we expect, in the next 10 days or so. But I think as the guys were talking about it, Chris, to echo their concerns with the Rays a little bit, they don't have a whole lot of length right now in terms of their, their staff. They've always been creative with things, but they've lost some key guys to injury and also trading with Stanek as well. So trying to find ways to replace them. Glassdown's going to be big down the stretch, but it's going to be in shorter bursts, even in a best-case scenario. Yeah, and they were talking about Corey Kluber, the Indians, a moment ago, left yesterday's rehab start after just one inning with tightness, abdominal tightness. How does that impact his timeline for his uh, possible return? Well, Chris, right now it looks like it's going to be a two-week shutdown for Kluber. Uh, no throwing or at least no game activity during that time. So it's a pretty significant setback given where we're at right now in the calendar. That according to the Cleveland Plain Dealer. So again, it was just the one inning that he was able to pitch. It doesn't quite get him all the way back down to zero for his overall workload, but it certainly is a pretty significant setback. But as Nick pointed out, uh, they have been able to get a lot of great contributions from some, some of their younger guys like a Bieber and certainly Savali and Plesak as well. I would add, though, on one positive note, for the Akron Rubber Ducks tonight, one of the great nicknames in minor league baseball, of course, Carlos Carrasco making his return. One inning that he pitched today, scoreless. His first pitch tonight, Chris, was 97 miles an Ooh. hour coming back as of course Very he's battling bad. leukemia 97 was his first pitch <clears throat> he is a factor potentially for the indians out of the bullpen down the stretch all right well that's good news and go rubber ducks right we got <laughs> all right uh, jp ducks. Uh